Hello friends, this is Ashton Kaylee, and in this week's video, I just wanted to share with you a process video of working in one of my watercolor sketchbooks. Um, this week, we're just going to have a relaxed chat as we go through this gouache painting. I'm using the Arteza 24 color set of gouache colors and the Arteza watercolor books, both of which I have done reviews on, so if you would like to check those out, check out the upper right hand corner for links to those videos or in the description down below. The subject of this painting is some alien like flowers and I have actually illustrated these before. They're some made up plant life I did for another painting and you can see that painting here. The original painting was done with oil paint and if you want to check out that video and process I talk about the actual oil painting process that I currently use and how I was doing things before. Recently I've been doing more and more oil paint and I used to love oil painting. I picked that up in college and I used a lot of the basic stuff that most people use these days, Gamsol and Liquin and that sort of stuff. Um, but I have since changed my studio practice to be as non-toxic and fume-free as possible. So um, you can learn more about that in this video uh, to the upper right and more to come as I actually describe some of the new products that I use. Anyways, that um, picture that I did then, I liked the flower that I had came up with. It was um, something that I felt like I wanted to do again, so I sketched that here in this watercolor sketchbook in a coal erase pencil in gray and decided I would do it in gouache. I've mentioned many times before I'm not wholly comfortable in gouache. I really really love the way it looks, though I don't have a ton of experience in it and I really think I have a long way to go to um, get better at it and get it to a place where I'm as comfortable with it as I am some of the other paint mediums. But I do love all forms of paint so I'm gonna keep trying even though I really am not terribly happy with I guess how I'm using them. I think that this one came out okay but um, I think my process, I don't know, I need some work and I just don't feel that same level of comfort, it, but it's okay, I'll get there. I just need to keep using it and keep practicing um, as with anything. I have been working on a lot of art pieces lately that I haven't recorded or shared. Uh, the world's in some weird place right now and myself included, it just, it's kind of hard to do work as normal and especially hard to want to share it all the time. So I do allow myself a lot of art time that I don't record so I don't feel any kind of pressure or anything like that. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about the paintings I'm working on. Um, I've had a few commissions lately, some larger scale projects that I've devoted more time on and um, they've been a lot of fun. The previous ones I have shared um, at least partially on Instagram and partially through here on YouTube or any other video platform that I've been sharing. Um, I've done a couple of pet portraits in oil and those were a tremendous amount of fun. I love doing pet portraits anyways, uh, the classic style and then dressing them up is just even better for me. I have always loved personified animals so I tend to do those a lot for fun and for commission. I just love it so yeah if you want any make sure you uh, contact me. Uh, Christmas is coming so Obviously, it's a busy time of year for a lot of artists, myself included, um, but it's work I love to do, so yeah, I welcome it. The deadlines can be a little bit of a problem, but I think deadlines are actually good for me because when I don't have deadlines, whether they be self-imposed or for actual clients, then I tend to not be so productive. It's really quite terrible. I'm really struggling to work on that. I thought I was getting better and I have bouts of time where I am actually really a lot better with that and then 
I, I guess, relapse, um, especially with how things are lately with the pandemic and having to stay home. Um, this has really changed a lot for a lot of people and how we do our daily lives. Um, I feel fortunate for all that I have and how being an introvert, it's actually not too bad in some ways. Um, I don't know. It's a mixed bag, and some days I feel okay about it, and other days it's a struggle, and I'm sure y'all can relate to that. Uh, even as an in, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, even as an introvert, um, being forced to stay home can be a little difficult because uh, whether you're an introvert or not, sometimes it is just good to get out there and mingle with other people and not to be. Um, I guess alone with yourself when you're highly judgmental of yourself, like I can sometimes be. But anyways, art's been fun, and uh, uh, my only real way of coping with things. It's a real source of comfort for me, always has been, and I am just eternally grateful to know my passion and able to do it I liked this weird flower I've seen people do like the eyeball flower thing before and I've always liked it I I have a thing for eyes anyways and human anatomy so it's a, a mashup that I have revisited many times and this particular flower the color scheme I wanted to be very different out of my personal um, comfort zone and look like something very foreign as it is supposed to be an alien type flower. I recently reviewed the Lucas Gouache Studio set and if you want to learn more about that you can check it out here. Um, like I mentioned this is the Arteza Gouache set which I kind of compared it to but I if I'm being honest I like the Arteza ones a lot better. They are not like super high quality but they are actually very nice for their price point the colors are very vibrant and they're pretty fun to work with while they're not my absolute favorite of gouache as of right now um, they are still quite nice and I enjoy working with them it's nice to be able to find some products that are not terribly expensive I am like most artists I, if depending on what you are doing with your work if you can afford it, always go for the better option. Um, but when you're a young artist and you want to try things that you don't really necessarily want to invest in, I would definitely recommend this set. It is really pretty good for their price point and I, I don't think that it would hinder you like some other products might if you go for like super cheap materials. Cheap materials are never really a good choice you end up fighting them more and you don't learn as well in my point in my opinion good art can be made with a variety of quality but uh, you you still want to use a minimum quality level I think just because of archival um, issues and how they function and work this painting, as well as the original, is interesting to me because I went with color combinations that um, I don't do. I have never really liked the combination of reds and purples, but I was trying to push my boundaries, work with color combinations that I'm not quite used to, and try to make something very foreign looking. So this weird plant thing is interesting to me because it's a living plant that kind of blurs the line between flora and fauna. I like to imagine what plant life and creatures would look like on different planets and different realities. It's a really good exercise and you can learn a lot about the actual anatomy and um, realistic details of things that exist here and then twist and distort them to make new and interesting things that 
can only exist elsewhere. I would really like to try the jelly gouache that I see so many people use. I have never used those before and I'm kind of curious how those work. And since I'm trying to continue and get better with gouache, I might eventually give those a shot. I also have been meaning to check out the Windsor & Newton gouache set or tubes. I don't know if they really have sets. I don't know. So far my favorite has been the Holbein and the... I try to put those into pans because I really like working with pans, but those crumbled a lot and did not work well for travel. I really do like travel sets and enclosed palettes like the Caran Dash set. I just find them super convenient and I feel like I waste a lot less when working from the pans. Since I work all from home now, I think I will try the Holbein again in some kind of small palette and see how that goes. I always loved the botanical illustrations of some books from yesteryear. They don't seem to be as prevalent now since photography has come such a long way and um, computer generated images tend to be a little less time consuming sometimes to produce. Um, the classic botany illustrations and stuff are just not as common, but I still love them and this is kind of inspired by that, even though this is a much more illustrative style. A lot of the paintings I've been doing lately have been a lot larger too, so having small little sketchbooks like this to work in can be a nice little escape. Something that I can finish in one sitting as opposed to the hours and hours it takes to finish some of the larger pieces. I have two other large pieces that I'm working on that are actually illustrations of Lovecraft monsters. And this project has been super fun. I regrettably did not film any of it. I feel a little bit torn on that. I, Like I said, I really do like not having to film everything because... It can be a little troublesome and with the larger pieces, especially working in oil, I do a lot of layers and um, just trade back and forth and video takes up a lot of space on the computer so it's kind of nice to not have to worry about setting up the camera each time and the lighting. I also work at various hours so none of that would be very consistent as far as lighting and angles and it just has made it easier. Hopefully one day I can set up a, a better painting situation where I can leave my camera out and in position. Um, I've wanted a GoPro for a long time so I could maybe just leave that on the, the easel and take my other camera and move it around as needed. But right now I shouldn't be getting anything frivolous. I'm trying to be careful and budget intelligently while this whole pandemic thing is going on because it has really affected my household income and um, yeah just trying to be prepared and save a little and use what I have for the most part. So I'm using the same um, tools as usual. I have a ceramic dish that I use as a palette and sorry about all the camera movement. I'm not really sure what happened. I think the um, attachment that I had on the the desk was not secure and it kept shifting. It was kind of cool panning effect, but it was not intentional and I'm sorry for that. I would like to do a lot more of these little quick illustrations um, just for practicing and playing with some of the materials I'm not as comfortable in. This little watercolor book has been a lot of fun just for that purpose. Um, I think I have mentioned before I'd, I have not been one to use a lot of color in my sketchbooks. My sketchbooks tend to be really brain dumps and um, really awful. <laughs> oh, you may have seen some before. They're not they're not great to look at. The, they are really just um, places for me to organize and really roughly work out my ideas. And I love it for that purpose. Um, this particular sketchbook I'm using more as exercises, not the same as my other sketchbooks, so that's a little bit different for me. I'm trying to work that into more of my studio practice. 
Anyways, that's going to be it for this week. I hope that was mildly interesting for you. And as always, all the links to the products I'm using are down in the description. Links to extra videos are in the cards and in the description. And I hope you guys are staying safe, happy, sane, healthy, and making some beautiful art if that's what you like to do. So y'all take care and I will see you next time.